So we are not live. It's not on Facebook right now, though. Okay. But it's recorded. I will call the Sartell City Council meeting for Monday, July 8th to order. Uh, of note, we are not live, but we are recording and we'll publish that. Please stand for Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, to the Republic for which it stands, one nation. Council, next order of business for us tonight is the agenda review and adoption. I'll look for a motion on that. We have a motion to approve. Is there a second? Second. Motion and a second. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? That carries. Uh, open forum public comment. We do have one registered tonight. Uh, Mr. Peter Wilson, I invite you to step forward, state your name and address for the record, and you'll have uh, three minutes. Thank you. Is there a timer up there? I've got it on. Right now. Okay, thanks. Um, hi, Peter Wilson, 1108 Celebration Drive, Sartell, Minnesota, 56377. I want to talk on the low-income housing presentation that was done here a little bit ago, um, last few weeks or month or two. Um, as I've thought about this more and more, and I've spoken out against these on an ongoing basis for a long time, especially in St. Cloud, I question much about this. Um, one of the things, and I'm not certain where the line is drawn, but is who owns this? What are the investors? What is their intent? What is their past history? Is it bad? Is it good? Do they care? Do they maintain things? Is the system run correctly? <clears throat> um, again, exposing, if possible, all of the names, not just the legal entities, the, the members of a LLC or an LLP, the, um, the owners of the corporation, the officers, whoever it may be, or the individuals, and lay it on the counter. No more hiding stuff. Again, maybe it's not permissible. I have minor ownership in three restaurants, two down in Iowa and one up in Michigan. And it, one in Iowa wanted a liquor license. There, um, I had to fill out individual forms. I don't know if they were made public. It doesn't matter to me. But again, sometimes information is available in multiple sources. Um, never even been into either, any of them. Um, again, uh, another thing to bring up is who finances it. Um, again, individually, they can finance things that are, they permissibly can or that make sense, but are there certain uh, slumlord financers that do these? Um, another thing, having seen these operations and spoken out against them in different places, is it gets down to being, why do so many people show up here? Why are they making money? What is it that they do? How, how are they paid that makes them want to come here and incent you to do this? 
I don't think it's because they pick up pop cans here. So um, another thing is, will this be a haven for illegal aliens? Another thing is, why four bedroom apartments that were mentioned? And again, I don't know how firm that was, whether it was just a comment or it was kind of like throwing a fishing lure out to see if something would hit on it. Um, again, um, I don't want to, I would call much of these things having seen who owns them in the area. Not always. It's not the apartment complex themselves, it's the low income ones. It tends to be oftentimes the donor class of some political parties or those with an economic incentive other than what you would think. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, council, next item on our agenda is the approval of city council minutes from June 24th regular council meeting. I'll take a motion to approve those. I'll make a motion to approve. Is there a second? I'll second it. Motion to second, any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Those carry. Uh, next consent agenda, we have items A through E. Is there a motion on consent agenda? I'll make a motion to approve consent agenda. Motion to approve the consent agenda. Items A through E, is there a second? I'll second. Motion and a second. Discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? That carries. On to old business. We have Ditch 13 and Grizzly Lane plan approval and authorization to bid. As they're bringing that up, Council, um, good evening. Um, as Mayor Fitzsum said this evening for your consideration are the plan approvals for the Ditch 13 um, Stabilization Project and the Grizzly Lane Conveyance Improvements Project. Um, as we're bringing that up, um, I did want to note that um, we provided an update to residents uh, via ClearGov with uh, the plan approval that is before you tonight. Uh, last week, we did receive a number of emails, phone calls, um, and even had uh, a recent meeting with a number of residents, um, just with concerns of, of, about the project. Um, so just wanna share with council that we are hearing um, about this project, um, people advocating on um, both sides for wanting the project and then also having concerns with the project. Um, because of that, I don't normally go into the background of a project or a plan approval, uh, but I do intend to do that tonight on a couple slides before we uh, ask for that final approval. Um, I'll keep going here uh, as we bring the slides up. Um, you're all very familiar with, with the project and the reason the project is taking place um, over the past couple years, we've had three very significant uh, rainfall and snowmelt events, which caused significant flooding within the Grizzly Lane area. Um, those events caused property damage, um, and because of that, uh, residents in the area advocated uh, to study and do something about the flooding that uh, was occurring in that area. So back in 2022, uh, Council did authorize a study for this project. Um, and we took a very in-depth dive into the flooding that was occurring, why it was occurring, um, and then potential solutions uh, to mitigate the flooding in that area. The Ditch 13 conveyance is about 8,000 lineal feet within the city limits. Um, most of it is an open ditch. There is 600 feet of that conveyance or that drainage way that is currently piped through two 48-inch pipes. Um, that section of ditch that's being conveyed through those pipes is creating a bottleneck, which is what then is causing the flooding. So um, the recommendations then from that analysis were kind of twofold approach or two-phased approach. 
The first phase would be restoring that open ditch within that 600 foot conveyance, um, eliminating the bottleneck, recognizing that that thing uh, can have impacts in other areas of the drainage way or the watershed. Uh, council authorized additional analysis of the area um, and the recommendation was to do a phase two, which is a diversion uh, upstream of this to help mitigate some of those uh, other impacts within the entire watershed. Um, so I'll just click through, this is the, the flooding issue. Um, I did put a top project timeline uh, for you to see. I'm not gonna go through these bullet point by bullet point. What I wanted to highlight is the red text are the flooding events. The green text is when uh, there was either a neighborhood meeting or a letter was sent out or communication or a, a website update on the city, uh, essentially where we had correspondence uh, with property owners. Uh, as I mentioned, the project started back in 2022 when the neighborhood uh, asked the city to start looking into this. Um, in the spring of 2023, residents in the area reached out to their local politicians and advocated for funding to get uh, a project in the ground. Um, those politicians reached out to the city, city said we needed, um, requested seven million to do the project at hand. Later found out a few uh, months after session that the city was awarded 2.5 million uh, to do a flood mitigation project in this area. Uh, so then in late 2023, uh, council authorized the design of the improvements that are in front of you today. Uh, so 2024, lots of ClearGov updates. We've been meeting with individual property owners about some easement needs, also to talk about specifics about any questions or the concern of, they have about the project. What I wanna highlight on this slide is um, the upper right-hand corner was the plan or general solution when you authorize preliminary or final design uh, at the December 11th meeting in 2023 very much mimics and is similar to the final plan set that's in front of you today, which is shown on the bottom. Uh, one question we were getting a lot over the last week is why the ditch is not centered on the property line. Um, and the reason being is the existing easement that's there today um, is skewed. It is not centered on the property line. So that top image, the blue lines are the property lines and that red shaded area is the existing easement that's in place that we have to work within. Current design is shown on the bottom. The bold dashed line is that easement location where you can see the proposed ditch is within that easement area. Um, so for the plan approval um, budget perspective, um, first three items on there uh, included the design analysis, uh, design um, plan approval is tonight and then construction estimates, we do anticipate remaining within that 2.5 million budget with the proposed projects that are in front of you this evening. Uh, Ditch 13 stabilization project is the first project. These are separate projects and will be bid separately. Um, the goals of the stabilization project are to restore the ditch profile. Um, the profile you see on there, the dash line is the existing profile today. Lots of sediment. Um, has accumulated in that drainage way and has created um, inefficiencies in how the water flows. We would be restoring that profile back to its historic conditions, making it more efficient and more effective. Um, we'd also be protecting the ditch, the toe of the ditch to prevent erosion, um, going in repairing some of the worst erosion areas and really stabilizing it as best as we can within our budget. Um, this is just a bunch of details on the different ways and approaches we'll be uh, implementing within that ditch uh, to help protect it and stabilize into the future. Uh, this is the Grizzly Area Conveyance Improvement Project. Um, you can see this is the existing design. The blue dashed line is the proposed ditch. Um, that is where a current 48 inch pipe is today. The green line is a 48 inch pipe we're planning to retain. The red box is a proposed box culvert, uh, nine foot wide uh, by six foot high under 13th Avenue. The red shaded areas are proposed easements that we are working with the property owners to um, obtain. 
Um, of note, uh, we do not have the easements in place. Like I said, we have been meeting with property owners and we'll be working with them. So approval tonight would be contingent on obtaining those easements. Um, in your packet, I also had that approval tonight would be contingent on obtaining uh, permitting. As of the end of last week, we do have permits in place. A number of the residents um, advocated to the politicians who work with the DNR to help expedite that permit process. Um, so we do have the, the DNR permits and the core permits in place, but we are still working on some of the easements. Tentative schedule for the Ditch 13 stabilization project. Um, if approved at tonight's meeting um, and authorized to bid, we would start the bidding process. We would look for a word of construction in August of this year with construction taking place this fall project closeout, some final stabilization taking place in the spring of 2025. The Grizzly conveyance improvements on a similar track. Um, bidding would occur after tonight if approved. A word of construction would be looking for in August construction uh, this fall and that would likely um, spill over into the spring just because of the size of the infrastructure of the box culvert and um, some other aspects. Um, before I, I take any questions, um, I, I would like to say um, in meeting with a lot of residents, um, lots of concerns on both sides of this project, one way or another. Um, there was a property owner that bought a property along uh, the Grizzly Lane conveyance uh, recently and was not aware or a part of this entire process. In meeting with them, um, there's been some input and direction that was given um, primarily along the shape of the ditch um, that led us to kind of the design you have in front of you today. And so I would also like to get approval uh, with the flexibility to make some adjustments, minor adjustments to that ditch shape um, with the plan approval and contingent on, on those easements in order to maybe accommodate a little bit more some of the, the residents um, and what they would like to see in their backyard. So um, with that, I'd take any questions uh, before asking for uh, final plan approval contingent on easement acquisition and some flexibility in what that uh, ditch shape might look like. Council, any questions for engineering on this project? Tim? Uh, just April, a question on the easement. Um, how apparent and when was the easement put in place and, and just for the answer, I guess, is just kind of question on where and how and when it was in place. Um, the, the easement was put in place with the original plat of the development. Um, so since 1997, um, the, the current easement that's in place was there. Anything further, Tim? Uh, no, that's okay. Jill. Uh, April, can you can you elaborate a little bit on the flexibility you're looking for as far as the the, um, what is the easements? Yeah. So currently in the plans, um, the ditch in the Grizzly area has got a three foot bottom. Uh, the north slopes at a, a two to one um, to tie into where we are and protect the pipe. The other side right now is at a two to one for three feet deep, and then slopes back up at like a sorry, a two to one and then back up at a three to four to one. So just flexibility in, in how deep that ditch is at a steeper slope versus a flatter slope um, and a little bit just on the grades. Um, so keeping the ditch there, um, we'd make sure that the capacity is there. Um, you know, there could be an option to raise the ditch a little bit um, to balance off some of the flood mitigation. Um, so just some flexibility and what that ditch shape looks like um, and how that functions a little bit. Um, are there safety concerns or what is practically the concern that concerns that are being brought forward? Uh, safety is the, the primary concern. Uh, the resident that recently bought that property has young children. Um, right now that easement is seven and a half feet off of their patio, their concrete patio. And so uh, with the current design, You've got your patio, seven and a half feet, and then it goes at a three to one slope um, down for five feet, and then a two to one slope for three feet. So um, really a, a fairly steep hill then with a, with a drop off. And so 
Um, just talking with them, the different options we looked at during the design of doing a two to one slope the entire way up, which gives them some more yard space, but then you've got an eight foot drop off and um, just the different shapes that ditch can be where it will still convey um, you know, a substantial amount of water compared to that 40 sure. inch pipe that's there now. Got it. What, for the residents that are abutting um, that ditch, what, what is it, what, like what practically how will the backyards change like beyond what you just described for the, I think it's like eight or um, currently those backyards are fairly flat. They do j slope gently, um, 10 to one. I know that probably doesn't mean a lot to people, but, um, fairly flat, mm -hmm. um, towards their backyards. The backyards are roughly 60 to 70 feet in, of green space right now. We'd be taking up all but seven feet of that with, with the proposed ditch. Um, so they would be losing a substantial amount of flat green space with the construction of this project. Um, again, building this, this ditch within that existing drainage and utility easement. Um, unfortunately, that utility easement does take up most of their property, you know, right. their backyard. Yeah, thank you. Follow up on that? Too. Yeah. Is that a mowable upkeep? How is that going to hold water? How is that ditch going to look like? Um, so the ditch, if you look upstream and downstream of this area, has water flowing in it pretty consistently. So there would be water in the ditch um, anywhere from half a foot to two feet, depending on the time of year. Um, and then it would be uh, grass. Generally, a four to one slope is considered mowable. Um, so there are portions of the ditch on the south side that would be mowable, but there are some that get up to a, a three to one slope, which would be much more difficult to be mowable. So um, some tall grasses likely is what would um, grow there. Um, when you have the large significant events, it would fill up um, much like you would see upstream and downstream with the ditch conditions that are there now. And is that maintained by the owner, the homeowner, or is that something, who manages that ditch space? Um, it, I mean, if you go upstream and downstream, it's, it's, it's on the city's ditch system. I would say maintenance is minimal to, uh, you know, Public Works went in two years ago on Ditch 13 and cleared out some of the deadfall and some other stuff that was impeding flow, but generally it stays in a natural state and is not uh, regularly maintained. Okay. Else? Yeah, I don't have any questions. I just would support the flexibility as we move forward. And um, as you mentioned, they're, they're losing quite a bit. So I think as much as we accommodate um, would be great. Um, we all obviously see the need for um, the changes, but um, yeah, I'd support having the flexibility. Yeah, I would say the same thing. Is there, from some of the flexibility that you're looking for, if you were to go flatter slope and then a, a steeper drop off, would there be additional costs from fences or different things that you would need to put in there or that the homeowner would have to put in there or, you know, just trying to think through when you're asking for flexibility and to give them yard back, I would assume it would be flatter and then a steeper drop off. Or does that impact the functionality at all as well? Uh, no, it, it really wouldn't impact the cost at all or functionality. We aren't planning on any, we're, we're planning for any fences along the design. Um, Property owners, if they choose, can put up fences. If you, like I said, if you go upstream and downstream, some choose to, some not. So it's really just in flexibility and what the slope and, and the elevations of some of those grade changes would be. Um, you know, whether they have a more of a hill and then a, a deeper drop off or, you know, less of a drop off and more of a steep slope back. Of the two easements that are yet to be obtained, can you walk us through, like, um, are there alternatives if we're not able to obtain them, or what, where is that process? We've met um, with both property owners in person, um, and we are working through those easements. We did make some changes based on uh, those meetings with the property owners, um, shifted that culvert is even further south, steepened up some of the slopes so that we could move it south and take, or, you know, get less easement, um, narrowed up the channel a little bit, um, 
we were looking at a 10 foot wide, five foot deep culvert, we're now at a nine foot wide. Um, and so next step would be um, finalizing those easement documents, meeting with them again, um, and starting the, the process to hopefully obtain signatures and, and those easements. Um, I should note that along ditch 13, we do have a number of easements there as well. Um, those are temporary construction easements that would go away after construction. It allows us to come in and help um, shape the size of the slope a little bit and give us a little more room to work along the ditch. So uh, the two up on your screen right now would be permanent easements. We would um, be in place uh, forever and the ditch 13 easements would be temporary easements that would go away. Mayor, yes. just one follow-up question to that. Um, to Jed's point, if we don't get signatures and don't obtain it, then what happens with those easements? Um, or or that pro this whole process? Yeah, well, we're, we're, we're hoping we can work, the, work with the property owners to obtain those, um, but we can't move forward with the project if we don't obtain those easements. The next step then would be working with legal to do condemnation to obtain those easements, which is a lengthier process and would uh, push the project out. So um, being able to start this project this year, um, like we had hoped, will de depend on getting these easements. Um, because they're separate projects, and this isn't why we did them as separate projects, it's just two different types of projects, um, Ditch 13 could still move forward if we got those temporary easements and be stabilized. Um, but if we, and if we have difficulty obtaining these easements, it would delay the project. Uh, all good questions um, asked, so I'm trying not to be repetitive here, but if you could touch on the timeline once again. I know, well, we've got a lot of rain lately, but um, I know the thought is spring flooding. Mm -hmm. um, will most of it, looks like most of it's closed out 2025, just punch list items, but do we expect, again, contingent on getting easements, all that stuff moving forward, substantial construction will be completed this year, ready for spring of 2025? That is still the hope. Um, the box culvert we have spec'd out is standard size, um, so we're not, we're hoping there's not a delay in getting that material. Um, there's always that chance, um, but if we get those easements and we can award in August, as uh, we hope to do with the schedule, majority of the construction would take place this fall so that it would be in place for spring. Okay. And then I would also uh, commend, it seems like we're threading the needle really well of how do we design it and construct it in a certain way that it will support spring flooding while also not taking up uh, more backyards than needed. So, I uh, appreciate the flexibility on it. I think I've heard from everyone they support that. I know Rob's not here, so and I'll defer to you on it though. Um, where I see that box culvert, it's north of the stop sign three-way intersection. Um, is there any ability as we're tearing the road up to do that, that we're able to level out that intersection? Do you want to take a stab at it first and then I'll speak to it if I, if Needed. Yeah, um, so from a funding standpoint, I don't think we have the funds to expand uh, road improvements to the, to the south. Uh, we do have a grant application in place with the MPCA um, for some additional flood, flood relief by doing some work on, on Grizzly, um, raising some elevations to try and prevent that roadway from flooding out um, like it has in the past or at least at a, a much lesser severity. Um, but I don't... At this point, I don't see the flexibility with the funds we have. Um, with that said, if bids come in decent, there is a drainage <coughs> benefit that could be experienced with doing that, and so we could do a, a, a change order at that time um, to include that if, if funds are available. Um, but it's not included now within the project. And when do you anticipate that paving actually happening? I mean, that would be a fall? It would be a late fall paving for the first lift and we would do the second lift in spring. Um, I guess council, something to think about. I don't know that I'd want to put a motion as such, but my mind goes to having it called out as a um, bid option for the paving aspect of it. Um, simply as we get into the fall and if there is an ability for us. Um, 
to fix a little bit of the pavement there. I just, I feel like the general public who doesn't navigate here is going to see new asphalt in a very confined area and wonder what we were thinking by not doing it another 40 yards south at an intersection. Um, and so I'd just love to understand what that alternative cost would be. But any thoughts on that or? Mayor, I think to April's point, I mean, I think we can at least get an estimate and come back and discuss that. And then it could also be something that is done in coordination if, if and when we hear back on the Grizzly Lane funding is where my head was at, is that at least to Ryan's point, let's get a number to it and look at our street funds, see what it looks like, but then we should know more about that grant application by that point as well. If that is funded, then it would absolutely sure. for sure make sense. Is it a detriment to the project going to bid by having that as an alternate? Um, Mayor Fitzum, I, if, if we want to look at doing that, I would prefer not to tie it to this project for timing reasons and also just the intent of the funding. And uh, I think it'd be easier to include it with our overlay package and our overlay project and get a, a separate bid for this location based off of those numbers potentially. Um, and I, I mean, we, let me think through that one a little bit more and see how we could best incorporate that. Um, the intent of the grant that we've applied for would be to change the grades on Grizzly um, in order to help, like I said, reduce that, that flooding severity on Grizzly. And so if we're looking strictly at just the pavement management, I'm not sure that falls under this funding. It would fall more, I think, under our, our overlay project. Okay. Uh, Council, any other questions for staff? Seeing none, I will look for a motion on the plan and authorization to bid. I'll make a motion to approve. We have a motion to approve the plan and authorization to bid. Is there a second? Second. Motion and a second. Um, and I guess, Alex, maybe if we can amend that motion to offer the flexibility that was within design. Yeah. Um, I make a motion to approve with the flexibility of engineering to accommodate as necessary. Uh, Mayor Fitzsimmons, can we also add contingents on um, obtaining the easements? Contingent upon uh, obtaining the two easements as stated. Still second? Second. Uh, we have a motion to approve the plan as presented, granting the Flexibility um, at a lot level design. Is that accurate? Uh, as well as contingent on the two easements obtained on the north side. And authorization a bit. Any discussion or questions on that? Discussion? Yeah. Uh, I just want to commend uh, April and, and the team that has gone through this. Um, we expedited government at its fastest that I could see. I mean, we, we, we got to the state, they came back, they, they were understood the urgency of this project and the, and the severity of it. They came back with um, funds to help us, which I, I thank our legislators in our area. Um, the neighbors went to bat and uh, overall the, the urgency and the severity of it was, you know, how we dealt with it was great. So I, I thank you for and I, I think the way that the, the neighborhood came together and talked about ideas and was, was wonderful. So uh, I'm being a resident in the wilds in the area, so I, I appreciate that as a resident as much as uh, a council member. So thank you. Thank you. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? That carries. Council, we're on to department reports. First up is PD. Here, member of council, you have our monthly report. Uh, Any questions for PD? I do. Tim, how are the dogs working out? Are they getting along to, with each other? Uh, they really don't train together. Uh, they're two different uh, animals, but uh, <laughs> yeah, it, it, we actually have looked at the chief uh, with the new follow our schedule. The camera man is trying to keep them on opposite shifts. So we have the kennel in the garage. 
have an issue with that. Uh, Kurt and Echo, uh, they're pretty new to being working on the road and, and working on their craft. Everybody's probably met Karen and Kimber, and I think the public has fallen in love with both of those, and that's been awesome. I think you'll see uh, some of the benefits to uh, Kurt and Echo Channel here hopefully shortly. Excellent. Thank you. Don't confuse the two. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, any other questions for PD? Thank you. Fire. Mayor, members of council, in front of you, you have monthly report for fire. Um, one note, I guess I, I made in the report and just wanted to talk about um, overall numbers this year. We had a pretty steep increase from last year. Last year was a rare decrease in call volume. If you look at the four year graph, we're still on track, um, but we are up 43% in calls at this point at the halfway point for the year. So, any questions? Happy to answer. Any questions for fire department? Do you have any plans on taking first next year in the tug of war? Oh. <laughs> well, it's well, it good to see some people read the packet. I did. Yeah. <laughs> we do. We do. We have a lot of plans. We're uh, we're working in depth right now. And I liked how you positioned that. We safely took second. <laughs> um, I just also would comment too. It just it seems like uh, staff member Malter is doing a great job with shared resources, and I just think that's a great efficient use of staff time. And so it's great to see the updates in both reports, kind of commending kind of how she's helping both of you guys in different areas and aspects. So I just wanted to point that out. Thank you, engineering. Yes. Good evening, Mayor, members of council. You have a report. I'd be happy to answer any questions. Any questions for engineering tonight? Seeing none, thank you. Public Works. Well, as I say four times, um, good evening, Mayor, members of the council. You have the Public Works report. If you have any questions, please let me know. Any questions for Public Works? Getting off easy, thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, community Development. Mayor and members of the council, you have my monthly report, and Anna thought it would be keen to include that it's also the IT report, um, which is non-existent, as you can tell. April, sorry for the delay. Um, we did run through it this morning, but as you can tell, when Rob's not here, it sometimes doesn't function properly, so next time he'll be here and I will be gone, so that's why my <laughs> monthly report is on this meeting. Um, just one thing that I wanted to include is that this week we have a Project Maxwell um, meeting with Deed, so that is exciting for all of us here, and staff have been working very hard on that. Um, any other questions, I'd be happy to answer. Any questions for community development? Thank you. City Commission updates. None at this time. All right, City Council Committee updates, miscellaneous business. Tim. Uh, I think nothing tonight except the mowing looks great around the city. I mean, it, as much as grass is growing, I think Public Works has done a great job keeping up. And I was out of Pinecone Park, and man, is that a hit. No, no pun intended. It's just packed every night. Um, so great job. Jill. Nothing tonight. Alex. Nothing tonight. Judd. Nothing tonight. Uh, I don't have anything. Oh, the one thing I would say is um, someone, I think, took it upon themselves to decorate Pinecone with uh, American flags. And I had a bunch of people reach out asking who did it and how do they support them next year. So I don't know who it is. Um, <laughs> but whoever did it, if they, uh, I guess, come forward, there's a lot of people that want to support it and see more of it. So um, uh, We did talk. Pardon me, Mayor. We did talk um, internally when we go to Mo, we'll collect them, of course, because they're in the boulevard. Sure. Um, and we're curious if somebody will reach out to reclaim them. So yeah. I'll keep you guys posted if we do here. No, I think it, it looks great. It was fun to see. Uh, that's all I have. Look for a motion to adjourn. So moved. Is there a second? Second. All in favor?